Thank you for joining me for another UnleashingFreedom.com podcast. This is Richard Wells. If you've ever endeavored to step out of the crowd, either in the attempt of achieving a lofty personal goal or undertaking a difficult cause, I'm sure that you've been called naive, stupid, perhaps foolhardy, or even worse for doing so, and it most definitely tested your resolve. In fact, it may have even derailed you or sidetracked you for a while, but if you're listening to this, it hasn't stopped you, even though you've witnessed many who, in the attempt of seeking excellence, fell victim to this verbal onslaught of negativity. Now, honestly, I must admit that some days negativity easily melts before me, and I smile and I press on. But other days, their sting opens a wound that lets anger or frustration towards others cloud my way. Now, such bitterness, if left unchecked, kills vision and success. Now, fortunately for us, the Bible shows through the example of Christ that forgiveness is the answer. Quote, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Now, if you doubt this, just consider some of history's most powerful examples. Men like George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and James Fortin all had to forgive in order to succeed. Now, the first two, who held the highest office in the United States government, are easily recognizable. But Mr. Fortin, who never held public or military office, perhaps slipped by your perusal of history. James Fortin was born free in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1776, a time when black people in America suffered greatly under the oppression of slavery. Now, at the age of seven, after his father passed away, he began working as a chimney sweep to help his family survive. His mother kept him in school, though, until the age of nine, when he began working full time. Not long after this, he was inspired by these powerful words, quote, that all men are created equal as boldly proclaimed in the Declaration of Independence. Now, by the age of 14, while apprenticing as a sailmaker, and with those words still brightly burning in his heart, he desired to fight in the cause. He soon found passage on the privateer ship, the Royal Lewis, as a powder boy, where he courageously conveyed gunpowder from the storage holds below to the deck-mounted cannons during the heat of battle. His fighting days were short-lived, however, when on his second voyage, his ship was captured and he was taken prisoner. This capture was even more devastating to James than for his white comrades, because though he was, quote, a free man back home, the British had a reputation for selling black prisoners into abhorrent conditions found in the slave trade to the West Indies. Now, in a stroke of good fortune, James's winning attitude earned him the admiration of the British captain's son, who was nearly the same age. His son pleaded on his behalf to allow him to be delivered to England and be freed. The captain agreed, if... James would renounce his allegiance to his country. James, risking the ire of the captain, refused to consider rejecting America and all that it stood for, stating, quote, I shall never prove a traitor to my country. Now, though he did not end up on a slave ship, he did endure seven months in a putrid, overcrowded prison ship before being released on a prison exchange. James, always a forward-looking person, returned to the sailmaking trade, and through his diligence and hard work, he would eventually buy the owner out. His innovations and business skill made him one of the most successful sailmakers in Philadelphia. Yet, ironically, while his diligence in business was making him financially free, a world-famous convention was meeting just up the road and would ultimately compromise, for the time being, on extending the, quote, all men are created equal part of the Declaration of Independence by not extending it to people of his ethnicity. Think of the anger he must have felt at that decision. Imagine the humiliation of seeing his brothers and sisters considered three-fifths of a person, not for their own rights, but for the establishing of congressional seats for their state in the newly organized United States of America. Should he have felt betrayed? Could he have become bitter and vengeful? Yes. But did he? No. It's been said that there are two types of things that you should not worry about. Things that you can help and things that you can't help. Now, at the time, he could do nothing to change the current slave situation, so he focused his energy on what he could help. For example, he employed both blacks and whites in his business, providing financial opportunity without discrimination. 
He became a wealthy entrepreneur, and he used his wealth to aid good causes. He advocated for temperance movements, helped found the Anti-Slavery Society, was a leader in the African Methodist Church. He supported women's rights and peace movements. He contributed writings to anti-slavery papers, helped with the Underground Railroad, and organized rallies against legislation that he didn't agree with. In fact, he became very diplomatic and was a key bridge between black and white citizens of Philadelphia. Now, by enlarging his heart to the things he could control, he made a difference. He defied bitterness, as evidenced by his working in causes for both black and white and male and female. He was a man with vision who did not allow resentment or bitterness to stand in the way of his success and the impact that he could have on this world. You know, every day we must choose the same. For example, you might feel betrayed by civic politics that threaten your way of life, or company politics that reward popularity more than merit, or even church politics that hint of hypocrisy. Now, in these cases, you choose to get bitter and lose your freedom by becoming a victim, or get better and choose to grow and succeed anyway. Remember, resentment and bitterness in these situations kill freedom for you and those you love most. So make the decision to think clearly before you act rashly or give up. And instead of choosing anger, think of James Fortin and forgive others their trespasses against you and choose freedom anyway.